I'm Mike Mandel, and with me is Chris Thompson. And remotely from the United Kingdom, we have Carl, Carl Smith, Smith, the amazing therapist, uh, trainer, and so on that we are bringing to Toronto at the end of April for his kinetic shift technique. He's going to do a weekend with us, and we've got him on Skype to discuss his amazing process, and we'll give you some information on this now. Chris? Yeah, so hello, Carl. Good to have you on. And what we really want to do with this video is to give people a bit of background about what you bring to the table in terms of your history and how you deal with trauma. And then let's spend some time teaching the audience a few techniques that they can use because most of the people watching this are probably hypnotists already. And let's just have some fun. How are you? Hi folks, how are you? It's great to be with you and it's great to see you guys again. And uh, as ever, having a bit of fun uh, and talking about the, 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 the industry, the, 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 you know, the profession that we're in and just enjoying ourselves. So, um, a little bit about myself is I've been on the circuit for about eight not eight years now, nine years I've been doing hypnosis, hypnotherapy, change work. But prior to that, I was um, 12 years in the British Army. I spent all the time, um, uh, you know, going to all the places that your local travel agent definitely won't send you to while serving in the military. I've done all the hot places, all the cold places. I've done some fun stuff in my time. And I've seen some tragedies and I've seen trauma and I've seen good things in my time while I was in the military. Mm. But then I left and then joined the police and uh, became a counter-terrorism officer within the UK. Um, so what happened was I went into firearms. The equivalent, that the only way that I can explain it to my uh, overseas friends is basically at SWAT level. We're at firearms level because right, right. Um, a lot of, um, like yourselves in Canada and America, that you carry firearms. In the UK, it has to be a specialist role. Then we get basic firearms and then move on to what we call like, you know, um, AFO and, and, and other levels. But in, to equate it to yours, it's SWAT level. All right. So you've seen a lot of trauma. You've seen a lot of bad stuff and, and some good stuff. Then you got into hypnosis and you started. At what point did you realize that trauma was going to be a specialty for you? Well, what happened to me is the reason that I really got into hypnosis and hypnotherapy is because in, on, um, while serving uh, and back at home, back in sunny England, um, I was sitting there minding my own business back at home and uh, a drink driver who had been at a funeral all day, who'd been consuming alcohol, cocaine and God knows what else had shoved into his system, decided to park his car in our house. And I mean literally park his car in our house. Um, he'd been on a bit of a bender, a bit of a bit of a boozy bender, and um, literally lost control of his car. He, I went outside to to, to find out what had gone on. I, obviously, everything's there's dust everywhere. I'd gone out to go look for what's gone on, and I noticed it was a young lad in the car. I've gone to the driver's side of the car, which is the right side of the car, gentlemen. I'd like to point out we, we drive on the right side of the road. We, you know. We invented the bloody thing. So we, I went over to the driver's side, and for some strange reason, I still don't know. When I, I always tell this story, I still don't know. I grabbed hot, the, the the car was up in the air, the wheels were turning, there was dust confusion, and it is absolutely abnormal because this is like in our house. I've wrapped my hand around the steer, around the the seat belt for some strange reason. I think I'm I'm some type of powerhouse. You know, I'm only 14 stone, but I thought that I was going to be able to stop the car. I don't know why. But what happened next is the car dropped down and they, found, they, they figured out that he must have dragged me at least 80 yards backwards, um, getting tumbled underneath the car. And then what happened is, is that I, once I popped out, I eventually let go and I popped out and um, he realized he was in a cul-de-sac and he couldn't get out. So what he did do is he, um, he, he stuck it back into first, into, into first gear and oh. um, he drove it back into me again. He then dragged me back down the road again um, and the only thing that he did right, the only reason they know it was roughly 80 yards because they found my pants and my underwear 80 yards up the road. Are uh -huh. you serious? Yeah, yeah, they found my clothes. There's some pictures. I've got some pictures of it as well. And, no, we and don't they, need the pictures. Okay. We don't need those. <laughs> so you were minding your own business in your own house. You got hit yeah. by the same drunk driver two times. Yeah, what happened was is that he reversed back, realized he couldn't get out of the cul-de-sac, bang, hit me again. And the only thing that he did of common decency that night was take me back home. So he dropped me off back at the front of my house, which was quite a pleasant thing for him to do. Um, and I came out of it with um, injuries. Um, my cocaine was completely snapped off. My, my heel was snapped off. My Achilles was snapped. Uh, my foot was completely busted. My right side, my, my foot was completely busted up. Every single bone was smashed up. Uh, tibia, fibia, uh, femur came out quite all right. My pelvis was crushed. Lower back, lumbar region was crushed. Uh, my scapula... Uh, clavicles, my arms, my forearms. But my other head. than that, 
other than that, you're all right. You were totally fine. That, what did the Romans ever do for us? Okay, so this, it's an actually we've known Carl for a couple of years now. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, when we first met you, Carl, we would not have looked at you and thought, "Oh, there's a guy who's been run over, you know, and had everything broken." <laughs> right. You look like a normal guy, able to walk, talk, function, everything. So I think, I think the key thing for me is is that when when um, when I was when I had. The, the physical injuries that went on, it was all well and good. The physical side of it, it started to repair itself. My arms, my legs, and everything started to repair. And I was on high doses of tramadol and pregabalin. Now, the, the, the issue comes here is that as I started to get better physically and I started to reduce the pregabalin and the, um, the tramadol, what happened was is this nasty little beast started to turn up. Because what had happened was is that what we now know is post-traumatic stress. Right stress disorder had been suppressed by the drugs mm -hmm. because I was eating them. What, ha what I then had to do then is, is literally just go on, um, well, as I was coming off of them, I then started de developing anger issues. I then started developing, um, you know, just aggressiveness. I was not sleeping right. There was a numbness. I just, I didn't feel right in life. I felt devoid of, of, of any emotions or anything like that. And what happened was is it started to really, as I came slowly off the drugs, uh, the doctor was starting to notice it as well. But I pleaded with him for more. I was arguing with my right. GP. Oh, wow. Which, okay, so basically the drugs drove a different ego state into your executive. <laughs> you were, one, you got them out of your system. You're now dealing with post-traumatic stress. And at this point, you haven't done any hypnosis, right? No. Um, um, what happened was is that um, a, a colleague of mine had said to me about, do, do you want to go do some hypnosis? Would you be prepared to have a look at it? Because I wasn't exhibiting Carl that everyone knew when I went back to work. So 18, let's forward this on 18 months, uh, two years to when I'm back at work, back in the police, is that I wasn't exhibiting the fun going, happy go lucky Carl. I was, it, it, there was, there was no, it was just gone. Yeah. I'd gone devoid. Mm. And uh, I found myself just eating tramadol like Smarties to be mm. brutal. I was, and it's not, and I don't want people to sit there and think, oh, it was a danger. I was sitting there eating tramadol just, just to, to, to keep the numb down, to keep that naughty noise down, that, that monkey noise down that I was, I'd spoke mm -hmm. to you about. Yeah, the head noise, yeah. Mm -hmm. To keep all that internal dialogue down. Um, and then all of a sudden, a colleague turned up and said, oh, I've got some hypnosis. And my only experience of hypnosis was uh, stage hypnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, in a seaside holiday resort in Great Yarmouth in, in the UK, my experience was of people, you know, square square chicken eggs and running around. That was my only experience. Yeah, yeah the so, entertainment angle as opposed to helping people, right? So initially it was like, I don't want any of that. But then it was explained to me, and I was educated, and that's what I love doing now, is educating people about the power of hypnosis and what we can do in that change state. Mm -hmm. and, um, and what happened then is he came along, and within that 60 minutes, I can only describe that in that short space of time, he absolutely unraveled everything because – the compression of everything I'd ever experienced from the Balkans wars to Northern Ireland's to Iraq's to anywhere else that I've been around the world and then compressing that and working on the streets of, of the UK as well, you know, and working in very volatile mm -hmm. situations had all then started to unravel. And that's the way I talk about PTSD now is it's like a big pressure cooker. It's a, we all know it's accumulated stress factors compress them, compress them, compress them until we have that moment where it has to pop and that's where PTSD or post-traumatic stress comes out. So right. You know what I always think of, Carl? That's a great metaphor for it. Chris and I were talking about this the other day and you know the golf balls, I don't know if they still make them the same way. We used to, as a kid, cut a golf ball open yeah. and inside yeah. you've got this All the wound up rubber bands, these elastics and you Thousands cut it with a knife and they start zzz. And I, I really get that impression with the PTSD. When you start to unravel it, there's a power behind it all breaking up. And I guess it's vital, as we would believe too, to get rid of it completely, not do a, sort of a halfway job. No, that's absolutely right. And, and the thing is, is that when <clears throat> when when, uh, when the guys, when I dealt with the post-trauma myself, well, when I dealt with the post-trauma with a little bit of a poke and a prod from a friend, I actually spent nine hours, and I tell, I tell my students this, I spent nine hours sobbing and crying, sobbing and crying. And it's hard for me to explain, but I was actually in a, in a pub in England, good old England pub, and I was sitting there drinking away. And while I was drinking away with some friends and some colleagues on, on, a, on, on that day, I was actually in tears, but in fits of laughter at the same time, this mass ab reaction is completely going backwards and forwards. There was no anger coming out. It was just uncontrollable mm -hmm. tears. And I can't explain it. There's a few people that will listen to this that were there that day and they just saw me just crying. 
But the next day, that night, I slept like a baby. No, mm. I slept nobody's business. So, and Carl, then, are, are you saying that the hypnosis session began to liberate all this associated and accumulated trauma going back years, and it continued abreacting well after the session? It's like a, a, a release valve was open, and this was coming out, and that's why you slept well. Yeah, and, and then what happened was, it's exactly, Mike, and what happened is we've got this massive pressure cooker, and it's like me lifting up those people that can remember those old, the old style ones where you lift it up, and it just gave a little bit of pressure off. It felt like the whole the whole weight had come off, literally. The whole weight had come off the pressure cooker, and all the steam was getting pumped out, and it literally was, and it was in short, short spans, but literally the next day, un- unbelievable, and that's why... I'm the animal that I am today with hypnosis and change work. And that's why I love doing what I do. That's why I'm so passionate. Perfect. Because Absolutely. Perfect so let's go. Our time's going. So let's go right to your kinetic shift technique, which yep. I've seen you do. And it's phenomenal. We're thrilled to be bringing you to Toronto at the end of April, April 29 and 30. I know you're going to be in California as well. And there's a lot of excitement about this, this weekend long training with you at the University of Toronto, where we teach, we do our seminars. Yep. Tell us a little bit about the kinetic shift. So our, our listeners and viewers are going to understand it a bit. Kinetic shift is basically seven seven parts. There is nothing new, Mike, and, and Chris, you know in this industry there's nothing new. It's right. the delivery, the way that I do things. Yes. It's that I'm very, very uh, – in my military and my policing background makes me very authoritarian, and it's the way that I do it. Right. And the key part to it is that I never talk to the person that sat in front of me. I talk to their – them as a third person. I talk directly to the unconscious, the subconscious, the monkey mind, whatever we want to call it this mm-hmm. week. We're, we were in. I talk to that directly, very direct. It's then confusional techniques. It's backfilling with some amazing um, things that, that they've never, they haven't experienced for a very long time, or if they, they they're in search of happiness. So we've got that going on. We've got confusional techniques. We've got eye movement techniques as well going on in there as well. So we're doing lots of work like Shapiro, based on Shapiro's work and other models that we've used. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's quite interesting to be quite honest because we did kinetic shift um, the other day with the use of a fMRI. It was quite interesting <laughs> that some of the models that were there like um, uh, EMDR and stuff, when they tested them on the fMRI, the simplistic me- models that I was using had far reaching results and more spikes, more blueness that were coming mm, out. Of excellent. It. So it's lots, it's seven different modules and it's about giving people structure. But the main thing behind Kinetic Shift and anyone that's listened to this has worked with me and done it, it's about bringing the therapist to life. About Wow. Yeah, that is a great way of putting it. Keep yeah. going with that. I love this description. Because because so many therapists, like I'm sat on a big leather chair at the moment. Now, I don't normally do this. It's because we're doing this. It's the best. But however, I don't do this whole Sigmund Freud, let's sit down and let's talk about it and really, really, really take you through some trauma. I don't do that. Mine is more a performance and people come to me for an experience. Yes. See me. They know something's happened, and that's the key part to it. And that's what Kinetic Shift does. It brings the therapist into the therapy room, not sat back there twiddling away and hoping and watching watching the clock. Because the amount of people I sit there going, well, I've got to give them an hour. No rubbish. If you're done and dusted in five minutes, kick the client out. That's my nice. opinion. I love it. I love it. And the, the wonderful thing is, um, Carl, having seen this work, I guess the people who attend the seminar, they're going to experience this as subjects as well, right? Absolutely. Everything that I do on, on any course um, that I do, it is 90% practical. On day one, you listen to me for two hours, listening to my modality, the way that I explain hypnosis and the way that I do ritualistic inductions. Then we do a minimum, a minimum seven different inductions. I normally squeeze in 10, including nonverbal communication inductions all the way through to rapid instant right. inductions, which yeah. builds confidence up of the therapist. Once we've done that, the next day we move into different modalities and then work with kinetic shifts. So not only are people coming to build their confidence, they're having a mass detox at the same time. Fantastic. And let's let's close with this interesting point. Um, obviously, Chris and I see the value of this. We, we met with you. We're taking the class. We're taking the class as well as students. Who would you recommend come out to this, Carl? Who is this perfect for? It's for therapists out there that want that, that feel that they're lacking that, that element of confidence, that little bit of that edge, that's what I, I, I love. In the UK, you'll see me uh, sometimes piping off about 
we're, we're, we're pumping out therapists at a mass rate in the UK without confidence. I want people that want to learn a different technique, one that's going to be really fast and effective, one that you don't need to dig up the past. I deal with the person sat in front of me, so it's all context free. Yeah. Everything that I do is all content free. Um, when we start unraveling with kinetic shift, then you start picking out little bits, but it's mainly content free. That is, that's a great way of putting it, Carl, because I agree with you. We, we see so many people usually they come into our classroom having done some other training and they felt that while they learned good things about hypnosis, they did not feel comfortable working with clients. They had confidence issues. Right. And taking a class that teaches you how to give your clients an experience will give you confidence. Fantastic, and the fact that it's hands-on as well. Otherwise, Carl, here's the metaphor I'm gonna offer here. From what you're saying about you know people getting the confidence, it's like the person who studies French all through school. Mm. They take a year of French in university, they go to Paris and they can't order a glass of orange juice. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they've never used it. It, you know, over in the UK, a lot of people are being taught Sigmund Freud's inside leg measurements, but it's not you, no use to them. In, in, nice. In, in, nice. In, in, Very good. It's, it's about literally driving them and making them. I'm, I'm energetic about it. I love it, and I love driving that into into people that come to my classes and especially in my therapy room at the same time. Well, we're yeah, gonna have a blast because April 29th is the first day of the two. It is my birthday as well, so we'll be hanging out together and going out for supper afterwards. Yes, we Chris, will. Chris, you want to wrap us up? Yeah. Here? So if you want to get more details about this, and if you're interested in coming to this class, then head on over to MikeMandelHypnosis.com forward slash. Carl with, with a K, K A R L, all lowercase. That'll get you to the page where you need to be at to register for this course. Come and take Carl's class with us. Mike and I are going to be in there. It's going to be great. A bunch of our students are going to be there. There are probably about 10 more spots as of this recording date. So it's going to sell out, folks. Be there.